These three case studies show how urban redevelopment can bring new culture to old forgotten areas. The Short North has a rich, vibrant history that dates back to the founding of Columbus, but most notably when the railroad first made its way through the area. The Short North felt its initial growth when in 1870 the Jeffrey Company came to a nearby surrounding area. This led to many jobs around the Short North, thus creating the problem of where these workers would live. The Short North provided this answer. Similar to the Short North, Dayton continued to grow due to two major forms of transportation, the National Road and the Miami Canal. This area would become known as the Fire Block District, which was home to many of the big companies of the time. This boom in jobs also led to the problem as to where these workers would live. The Oregon District was home to many of these workers. All three areas started out as these vibrant hubs, but were hit with hard times and were forced to adapt due to urban redevelopment and the new culture and societal values that came along with it. In 1913, the city of Dayton hit a snag when a flood, the Great Flood, hit the city, causing thousands to be displaced and millions of dollars of damage. It is right after the flood that the Fire Block District gets its namesake, and the Oregon District started on a journey of inedible decline and residents had begun to move out. The Short North felt a similar catastrophe in 1914, when the historic arches were torn down. Thus started the Short North losing its former identity. Development in the central Ohio area continued, but it started to move away from the Short North area, causing the area to completely lose its identity as a friendly residential area. As the short north continued to lose its population, Dayton tried to fight the decline, but was unsuccessful. The Fire Block District was home to the most thriving companies at this time. The Lau Brothers Point Store, CS Ball Candy Company, Delco Light Products Store, the Buckeye Engineering Company, and the Cyber Manufacturing Company. Dayton and Power and Light was the first company to occupy this district, and the building ultimately becomes the last to be built. The area is forced to take on transformation as it is no longer mainly a commercial area and a residential area. This growth in industrial identity continues when General Motors expands to Dayton in 1921, seeing Dayton as a good area for a new industry since the area is still looking to fill the hole that the old residential life left as it left. The residential culture moved from the Fire Block District to the central parts of the city, including the Oregon District. The city still felt a hit as the depression started and struggled to go along, but due to the new developments, it was able to survive. One reason it was able to survive was the National Cast Register Company, which employed 6,900 people in the central part of the city. In 1950, the Short North became known as Blighted, so blocks of housing were torn down with the idea of new, better housing to take its place. However, in the place of where this new housing was supposed to go, a new highway development soon took its place. This new highway firmly split the short north away from the downtown from the downtown. Not long after this happening in Columbus, in Dayton, as the central part of the area continued to grow, blight began to become a major issue by the 1960s, and clearing the area and redeveloping it seemed like a logical answer to solve the problem similar to as in Columbus. In 1966, 
the city brought in the Chicago firm Bertrude Goldberg to do a site plan of the area and economic feasibility study to determine how best to redevelop the area. As the 1970s started, both the Short North and the Oregon District and Fire Black Districts were looking for direction after years of blight. Both areas turned to redevelopment with a focus of saving the old while bringing in this new era. In 1970, the demolition of the Columbus Union Station was stopped to save the historic architecture. The Short North began its transformation into its new identity as a historic district with a commercial aspect. By 1980, the area had less than 20% of people living there that also lived there in 1970 due to the changing living styles and conditions as the area shifted to this new style. The area turned to a more artistic style for commercial use as its first gallery opens in 1980 and in 1981 the Short North Tavern opens officially dubbing the name the Short North for the first time as before it was just slang used by the police to signify the area north of downtown, but south of the Ohio State University. The area continues to grow artistically, as in 1983, the first successful night gallery, Hop, opens, bringing people back to the area at night. And in 1984, the first art show is open on the first Saturday of the month further increasing this new identity. The area is starting to gain. 1986 was a big year for the Short North, as the Columbus Dispatch caused the project an initial success. Rigsby's Kitchen opens and is renewed and continues to bring more and more people to the area. And the PM Gallery turns a profit for the first time, showing that this business model can work increasing the culture identity hold on the area. The area continues to enjoy this new growth and in 1990 due to the technology boom and surrounding areas local businessmen then began to invest in the Short North helping its growth even more. The Short North however did learn from past mistakes and in 1999 put the Short North Improvement District to help with safety, cleanliness, and overall beauty of the area to avoid blight coming back to the area in the future. Today, the Short North is a thriving area full of life and growth. It is a destination that a tourist will come to see as it offers diversity and culture unlike anywhere else, to see its restaurants and art shows. The area has also started to host marches and rallies, such as a pro-LGBTQ march this past summer. It is a gleaming example of how urban redevelopment can save a dying area and bring along with it a new culture that can thrive as past cultures in the area have died out. Dayton elected to follow this new route as well and in 1972 the city created the Burns District which would later be named the Oregon District. It was created to preserve the area and turn it into a historic area. As the fire block district became less and less residential the Oregon took on these residents as it had a foundation as a residential district started by the National Cash Register. But now it was with a historic element. By the 1970s, the Oregon district had become majority African American from before when it was majority white. The districts also saw a huge jump from renters and homeowners being white and now African American. This wasn't a major issue but it kept the city officials wondering how such a thing could occur 
so quickly. Today, the five block and Oregon districts are booming due to redevelopment. The Oregon district is now home to many of the nightlife scene restaurants and bars and home to many downtown area employees. The Flyerbach district has begun to regain its strength and construction has begun for the historic building with the hopes of the famous Dayton Arcade opening and a continuous growth of companies returning to the district. $100 million from donors and funding has been raised to complete this project. All three of these areas started out with one identity, but due to urban renewal, were forced to take on a new identity. Along with this new identity came new culture that these areas would become known for. The short north went from a primarily residential area to a historic area with commercial aspects and locally owned companies. The fire block district went from a residential area to be known for industrial aspects. And finally, the Oregon district went from being primarily commercial to a residential area to accommodate for the change in the fire block district. All three areas were left for dead as blight had taken its course and left the areas empty and forgotten. But thanks to urban renewal, they were all given a second life and are all thriving in their own aspects now. Without urban redevelopment, these areas would be dead and forgotten about. But thanks to a birth of new culture and life into the areas, they are now all thriving and growing with no signs of slowing down.